else's life good. The left, or I should say a leftist, is operating out of a very different framework, so, uh, socially, emotionally, and structurally. You're looking at a, 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 what I term uh, and have applied to a group, and it wasn't, I, I did not invent this, but um, uh, it's, it's a, it's a long-term theory that's generally been applied to tyrannical individuals called malignant narcissism. First applied to people like Stalin and Hitler. That narcissism, how many of you um, are aware of what narcissism is? All right. You think it's a thing that where you think you're great, right? Where you think you're the best thing since sliced bread? Narcissism is actually the opposite. Narcissism is the belief, and it's rooted in the negative, that everything that happens, happens because of you. And it occurs when you're being raised as a baby. You've got parents, hopefully, or a parent, who are paying constant attention to you, that everything that happens when you're an infant is all about you. For people who don't have that, like myself, what happens is you have to give that to yourself. So you turn to inward, you turn into yourself, whereas a healthy individual has external adults doing that for them. So narcissism sets in in childhood, it's irreversible. It is this internalized focus based in the negative of abandonment or of trauma. And so when you see things that happen, as an example, some of you may have experienced this, you're driving down the freeway and some guy cuts in front of you. You think, oh, he did that to me on purpose, right? Or somebody takes your parking spot at the mall, okay? Oh, he did that to me, that it's personal. Somebody speeding by and maybe comes over into the lane a little bit. Oh, he's doing that to me. All of us have a little bit of narcissism involved at things, but where, where the left goes wrong is that literally everything that's occurring, everything that you do, that this meeting is an example, as liberals will be watching this on C-SPAN, will believe that we're meeting to figure out that we're obsessing about them, because after all, I mean, you look at the title of the seminar, we're obsessing about them and we're trying to figure out how to stop them and we're, we're some, there's another hundred people building the camp right behind here that's waiting for them, all right? <laughs> the truth of the matter is, what this is about is about you. This is about your relationship with people who are different from you, your relationship maybe with your family and your friends and even the future, right? Uh, they are is kind of the shadow of having to, the, the thing you have to deal with in leading your lives. So when it comes to narcissism, if it's, un, if it's not dealt with, I'm uh, fortunately uh, now a benign narcissist. I still think uh, that, uh, I'll give you an example of my own narcissism. Uh, live in a house with some big uh, picture windows and a bird flew up to the window and started banging on the window with his beak very aggressively. Now I start feeling like Tippi Hedren in the birds, right? <laughs> and uh, I'm thinking uh, it wants me. Uh, it hates me. My house is in the wrong place. Uh, it's, I, I can't go outside. Uh, there's a plot. Call up a friend. Now, what I have to manage my issues is it, are my friends. My friends know what my issues are. And so I call up one of my friends and I said, okay, the, I, I don't know what to do. There's a bird out there. And, uh, and I knew I was having an unreasonable reaction, a little bit. And I said, there's a bird out there on the window and it's banging. I think it might even break the window. It's, real, it's a big bird and it's aggressive. I don't know what it is, but it's big. And she said, okay, I want you to go up to the window. I said, oh, no, no, I can't do it. She says, go up to the window. She says, look at it. It's hitting the window. And she says, first of all, is it, is it just flying there or is it standing? I said, no, there's a ridge there. It's standing on the little ledge. She says, okay, look at its beak. I said, okay. She says, is there anything in that beak? I said, oh, yeah, there's, a, there's like a there's a seed or something in there. She says, well, it's trying to open a seed pod and your window is the flattest, hardest surface it can find. It has nothing to do with you. It has to do with it trying to open its own seed so it can have some lunch. It's not thinking about you at all. Now, that of course broke my heart that the bird was not thinking about me. I could not comprehend how it was not thinking about me, but that is in part what made me a great foot soldier for the left, all right? Was the idea uh, and Valerie Plame, I'll give you an example, she just now had her lawsuit tossed out. She was suing everybody in the White House, and you probably, for outing her. Uh, and I noted this as this lawsuit was going on. We know it was Richard Armitage who, as a gossip, was gossiping with Bob Novak. Uh, Armitage, who was critical of the president, probably sympathetic to people like Joe Wilson and Valerie Plame. And he did, it was like nothing. So the lawsuit was thrown out. But Valerie 
Plain and her husband really believed that the leaders of the free world were obsessing about them. That the leaders of the free world in the midst of a war were just plotting and planning about how to get her. Well, there's a newsflash for Valerie Plain, even though, of course, I feel guilty because she's very attractive. Truth of the matter is, the truth of the matter is, no one is obsessing about Valerie Plain. No one is plotting against her. She was a bureaucrat. A stupid, sloppy gossip revealed her identity, which was as easily as revealed as when she drove to the CIA after she dropped her kids off at work. Uh, you know, she's not, uh, you know, Jason Bourne running around doing things. It's just not the case. But that's another example of narcissism, of malignant narcissism, as is uh, Michael Newdow who is the man who was suing uh, to stop the uh, Pledge of Allegiance and prayer in school, and also had a new lawsuit uh, to take the words in God we trust off of our uh, currency. Why? Because he's an atheist. And so as a malignant narcissist, he needs everything to be like him. He can't have things reflective of something that isn't what he believes. Or Sean Penn. Remember, how can any of us not remember Katrina, <coughs> right? Why would Sean Penn take a little leaky boat to row into New Orleans? Because there was a major international event that was getting a lot of attention, and it had nothing to do with him, until he made it something to do with him, didn't he? Suddenly, he was in the midst of Katrina, and the, there were cameras on him, and finally it was about Sean Penn, because he put himself there. Cindy Sheehan. Things that have nothing to do with her, everything to do with the sacrifice of her son. That was his sacrifice. And yet, at a State of the Union address, she needed to make that about her as well. It is the famous sighting of the malignant narcissist, squawking, running around, trying to insert themselves into things. Because for the leftist, when there's a major event that doesn't uh, involve them, it threatens their very identity. All right? Now we get down into the, the malignant narcissism, the idea that everything that happens happens because of them or must be about them, right? It is also, it, it's not about a, a, a rationalized framework about issues either. This is also about projection. Now the last element of malignant narcissism and why there is such an obsession about, let's say, you've heard oh, Rosie O'Donnell say this, that everybody's gay. Everybody's got a little bit of a homo in them, right? <laughs> Everybody. The truth of the matter is that's not the case at all. But if you're a malignant narcissist and you're a gay, you're going to try to make everybody be like you, right? And you've got to have that. That's projection. The projection element of this, as you're dealing with these, and I, this is a, a method of my madness here about giving you some insight about how to deal with the people you're dealing with, uh, is if you have, a, let's say, with a, a projection with, say, a thief, thieves usually believe that everyone's trying to rip them off, right? Or you have um, somebody who is uh, an adulterer, who cheats, who then thinks they're constantly being cheated on, who, does, who they don't trust you. All right, that's projection, all right? So when the left comes up and accuses you constantly of trying to undermine them or hurt them or stop them or you're out to get them or you're a racist, sexist, and a homophobe, that's projection, all right? So you hear these things, and this is the natural, it's part of the, the book you got yesterday, The New Thought Police, of these uh, arguments against you, is that you, you're faced with people on campus who accuse you of being things you're not. You can't prove a negative. How, how do you prove you're not a racist, all right? You have malignant narcissists who want everything to be about them, so they believe you're plotting against them. It explains the conspiracy theories we discussed, uh, uh, Stephen discussed earlier. So they believe you're plotting against them. They're paranoid. They do think you're after them. I can tell you in my time and now, I was told repeatedly that Christians were out to get me, that what Christians did during the day, now I should be so lucky, is all they did was think about me. Uh, whereas, in fact, you're not, and you didn't, and you weren't. And I found that out when I started a career on talk radio, speaking to Christians literally daily. And that's where I found out I'd been lied to. But that's another reason why leftists are told not to speak to you. Because the moment they speak to you is they find out that they've been lied to about your intentions and who you are, right? So the left, in its, its campus activities, its attitudes towards you, its hostility, there is a tendency, how many of you have felt, and I've, seen, I've heard adults say this to me, 
at very expensive uh, seminar retreats. I had a couple women come up to me and say, you know, maybe we just need to give up the moral high ground to the left. And they really believed that maybe the left had the moral high ground for a minute. And I said, don't you dare. They, they, do, they do not have any high ground at all. What they're doing is they're trying to stake out a position to keep you from being able to operate from where you naturally live. 